Okay, so now we're going to have a look at a functions question. This is from paper 1 from the year 2010, and it's question 5c. So let's have a quick read through the question. So let f be the function fx goes to minus x squared minus 4x plus 5, where x is an element of r. First question is, find the coordinates of the points where the graph of the fx cuts the x-axis. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say about this is try and figure out in your head what this graph looks like roughly. Right? So, for every function you have a corresponding graph. Now, if, if you see that there's an x squared in the function, uh, and, and that's the highest square, that means the graph is going to look like either a u-shape or an n-shape. Now, uh, it's quite easy to figure out which one is it is because if if the x squared is negative, it's going to be an n shape. So you can think of n for negative. So what your graph is going to look like, just very roughly, it's going to look like something like this. Now I don't exactly know where it cuts through the x-axis, but uh, this is just a rough guess. Okay, so let's have, a, have, a, have another read of the first part of the question. Find the coordinates of the point where the graph of fx cuts the x-axis. So basically we're trying to figure out where the graph cuts the x-axis. So I guess this point and this point. So it's actually two points. That's, that's why they say find the coordinates, plural. Okay, so how do we actually find these two points? Well, the key to this is to realizing that, that, that both this point and this point um, are both, are both lying opposite zero on the y-axis. So you actually know the y-value of these two points. It has to be zero. Okay, so we know now that y has to be zero. So um, we're going to use this fact to help us find out what these two points are. Now, you don't really need to draw this graph uh, to solve this problem. I'm just using it as a way of explaining where our solution is going to come from. Uh, so this is something that you might do in your rough work, but it's not part of the solution. Okay, so this is how we actually solve this problem. The first thing you should always do is change the function, uh, which is written like this, into an equation, right? So fx, as you know, is always equal to y. So I'm going to change this to y equals to minus x squared minus 4x plus 5. So now we have an equation and we also know that if for those two particular points that we're looking for y is equal to 0. So what we can do is substitute 0 in for y. So what we end up with is something that looks like a quadratic equation. Now the only awkward thing here is the minus before the x squared. So I want to get rid of the minus. I don't really want this here if I'm going to solve this as a quadratic equation. So the easiest way to get rid of a minus is to multiply everything by minus 1. So you see here, multiplying the whole equation by minus 1 gives us uh, this answer here. Now, um, the next thing we need to do, as, as you know, is to factorize the quadratic expression here. Now, and as you know, there are lots of different ways of solving quadratic or factorizing quadratic expressions. Uh, when I see a simple one like this, because I say this is simple because there's no number before the x squared, and these are relatively small numbers, it's probably very easy to figure out. So the method I like to use for this, I call the x method which I'm going to show you now. So the first thing that you do is you, you write here the factors of x squared. So two things that multiply to give you x squared. So in this case it's pretty simple, it's just x by x. The next thing you do is you get the factors of the, the last term here, minus 5. So what you need is two numbers that when you multiply them you get this as an answer. right? So for this, you've got to think about the sign and you've got to think about the numbers. So to get a minus, it's obviously going to be a plus by a minus or a minus by a plus. It can't be a minus by a minus because that will give you a plus. 
So um, we know at least it's going to be a plus by a minus. So we're just going to write that in. Plus and minus. And then we also know that the factors of 5, there's only two possible factors, 5 and 1. Now the question is, which, which one is the 5 and which one is the 1? So the way you figure that out is to basically the higher the higher number five will go opposite the sign of the one the one that's in the middle. So it's it's a the sign in the middle is a plus, right? So you put the higher number next to the plus. So therefore um, now you have uh, the factors of minus five, uh, minus one by plus five would give you minus 5. So the question is how do we know if we're on the right track or not? Um, well what you do is you cross multiply so hence the name x method so we're gonna multiply the x by the minus 1 and the x by the plus 5 right so x by plus 5 first for example would give you plus 5x and then minus 1 by x will give you minus 1x uh, if you add them together you get plus 4x and you can see that is the same term as what you have in the middle here and that's what you want to have once you get this answer here you know that you you're on the right track right so the answer then for like the factors of this expression would be x plus 5 times x minus 1. So now all that remains to do is to separate this, this whole equation here into two separate equations by setting each of the factors equal to zero. So I'm just going to do that now. So we separate the equation into two, two separate equations um, x plus 5 equals zero and then x minus 1 equals zero. Uh, so these are fairly straightforward to solve so we just bring the 5 across the equal to sign so it's going to become x equals minus 5 and then likewise for the other one we're just going to bring the minus 1 across the equal to sign so it becomes x equals 1. So we have two answers for x as we always will have when we're doing an equation with x squared in it. So um, now how does this help us solve our problem. Remember the problem was to find out the two points where the graph cuts the x-axis. Well these uh, these two, two values for x tells you basically where and what the value the x values of those two coordinates are. So if we look back at the graph we'll see that um, so if you recall our, our graph looks something like this Right, so we had two points, x0, x0, and the, qu the problem is we didn't know what the x values were here. Well, now we do. x is minus 5, so this minus 5 goes here, and x equals 1 refers to this x here. So we figured out the two points where the graph cuts the x-axis. So our, our answer would be the co two coordinates, minus 5, 0, and 1, 0. Now it's important when they ask you in a question what are the coordinates that you write down x and y coordinates. So it would not have been correct here just to say that the answer is x equals minus 5, x equals 1. You have to give the two points. So coordinates means points, that means x and y values. Okay, so let's have a look at the second question here which is probably slightly more interesting. So you've, you have to solve fx equals fx plus 1. Okay, now when you see the word solve, that means basically you have to find out what x is. Right? So it looks a bit confusing now because you've got the fx. You don't really know what to do with these. Uh, so we've got to perhaps change this somehow. 
So, well, the first thing you should know is that fx is equal to all of this. So what you could do is you could replace the fx in this equation with minus x squared minus 4x plus 5. So all of this would go on the left hand side of the equation. And then you just have to figure out what fx plus 1 is. Now, um, I'm sure you know how functions work, but I'm just going to just give you a quick example of a basic uh, function problem. So let's pretend you were asked to find f of 3. So what would you do in that case? Well, the proper way to do this would be to substitute the 3 that you have in the brackets here in for x in the function. So you'd say f of f of 3 equals to minus 3 squared minus 4 times 3 plus 5. You see the 3 is just being substituted for x. 3 substituted for x. So the basic rule of solving functions is that you substitute whatever is inside the brackets in for x in the function. So, bearing that in mind, what do you think f of x plus 1 would equal to? Well, following the previous logic, we'd have to substitute x plus 1 in for x squared, or in for x, sorry, in the equation. So, instead of having minus x squared, we'd have minus in brackets x plus 1 squared. And we'd also put the x plus 1 in for x in this term, so it would be minus 4 times x plus 1 plus 5. So therefore we know now that f of x plus 1 is equal to minus x plus 1 squared minus 4 times x plus 1 plus 5. So we can take this and we can put it in, substitute it in for x, fx plus 1 on the right hand side of this equation. So now let's write out the full equation. The full equation would be, uh, first of all we substitute the minus x squared minus 4x plus 5 in for fx, put that equal to then the minus x plus 1 squared minus 4x plus 1 plus 5. So um, I'm going to write that out now. Okay, see here we have on the left what corresponds to fx, and on the right we have what corresponds to fx plus 1. So that gives us a long equation here, and now it's just a question of solving the equation. Now there's one kind of awkward thing about this equation here. See the minus here, and then you have the x plus 1 squared. So um, normally uh, what you might do here is just work out what the x plus 1 squared is, and then change the sign of your answer at the end. But I think an easier way to handle this might be just simply to get rid of the minus sign in the first place. So what we can do then is simply multiply the whole equation by minus 1. So notice when you multiply by minus 1 here, uh, it gives you, you change the sign of all the terms here, except for you don't change the sign of anything inside the bracket. So these remain at plus. Everything else changes. Now this makes things a lot easier. Uh, another trick we can use is when you have the same number on both sides of an equation like the minus 5 here and the minus 5 here, well they just cancel each other out. So we're left with... Now you notice we've actually multiplied out the 4, 4 times x plus 1 and got 4x plus 4. So again we can see what well, quite conveniently that the 4x plus 4x here matches the plus 4x here, so again, these we can cancel out. So this gives us uh, this expression here. Now you notice I've changed the x plus 1 squared to x plus 1 times x plus 1. That's the correct way of doing it. The incorrect way of doing this would be to square the x and square the 1. So a lot of people make that mistake, they say that's just equal to x squared plus 1 squared. That's incorrect. Uh, when you square something, you're squaring whatever's in the bracket. So basically, you're multiplying what's in the bracket by itself. So x plus 1 by x plus 1. So when you multiply algebraic expressions like this, what you're really doing is multiplying the x here by x plus 1, 
and then the 1 by x plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite that now. And this in turn gives us... So, um, so now we can see again that we have two like terms on either side of the equation. So we're going to cancel these guys. Which gives us 0 equals 2x plus 5. Now, uh, what that means is that we don't end up with a quadratic equation, so we don't end up with two answers. It's just a simple equation, a linear equation, and to solve it, we just simply bring the, the number over to the other side, and then uh, bring the 2 over as well, and then we solve for x. So the, mi the minus 5 goes over here and becomes, or sorry, the plus 5 goes across the equal to sign and changes to a minus. And now we just got to bring the 2 across. So you've got to ask yourself, what's the 2 doing here? It's multiplying by x. So when you bring it across the equal to sign, it's going to do the opposite. So it's going to divide into 2. So you're left with, so minus 5 over 2 equals x. So x is minus 5 over 2. That's your answer. You've solved the equation.